where my phone went. So I guess I won't get that text. Okay, and we are now live on YouTube. Excellent. So I'm going to call this meeting, this pillar committee meeting for up-to-date buildings. And, no, wait, it's not up-to-date buildings and facilities. I knew, that was my mistake. <laughs> I'm like reading the agenda. <laughs> we are engaged families, right? And communities pillar. Phew. Okay. I call this meeting to order. Um, do we have to do a Pledge of Allegiance or anything like that when we start this? No? Okay. But we would like to start our meeting off with our mission, vision, and values, just to make sure that we keep that in mind as we're discussing this pillar. But our mission is to equip every student with the knowledge and skills necessary to be resourceful and successful. With our vision being that the Estacada School District will be a premier school district in the state of Oregon by 2030. And our values are to inspire, engage, and achieve. So excited to be here. Um, thanks for adjusting the schedule. And I'm glad we could still fit this in this week. Um, as far as a board member update, I do not have any this evening. So I would appreciate us to move on to the superintendent update. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Director Shibahara, and uh, just appreciate your leadership in this pillar. Um, also, uh, just want to communicate that I'm excited about our conversation tonight. This is our first uh, uh, meeting back together after our 30 days. Uh, and so I look forward uh, to being able to communicate and report out to our community uh, the actions that we're taking as a school district to improve our parent engagement and to improve our parent satisfaction in the operations that we're offering. Um, and uh, so look forward to that conversation and uh, excited to see our growth in that conversation as well. So uh, thank you, Director Shibahara, and that's the superintendent's report. All right, well, I will uh, get rolling then. And it looks like we have a couple of live viewers as well. So I wanna thank those that are watching us live on YouTube. And one of the perks of being in this pillar is we are the first group to get a custom thumbnail that is already um, on our YouTube. So we are represented well this evening. So uh, without further ado, I will just get started. I have a quick uh, slideshow today just because we have a lot of uh, wins to share and data that I just wanna give um, justice to. So um, to start out, we, our goal is that by the fall of 2021, we will score an, a 3.88 on the Parent Satisfaction Survey um, as a recap. So that is a 0.1 improvement over the 3.78 that we got this fall. And we are coming up on our spring parent survey um, in several weeks. So excited for that to come up. But we also have some really good leading measures that can kind of tell us if we're on track towards meeting that goal. I also um, wanted to point out that our lowest score that we received is the area that a lot of people are focusing their actions on. And that lowest score is I regularly receive feedback from school staff on how well my child is learning. We scored a 3.21 in the fall. So that is what a lot of the leader action plans are centered around um, at this time. So um, I want to encourage anyone to interrupt me at any time. And at the end of each slide, I'll kind of um, allow anyone to share any wins that they have and answer, um, ask any questions as well. I really want this to be collaborative, but um, some of the wins that we're looking at so far is um, that EMS just launched their learning series recently. They had um, 132 views on their first one and they were focusing on math. They had some great participation um, from school staff at EMS. Uh, the math teachers were um, joined by Principal Hargrave to really talk about how you can um, monitor your child's progress in math. And at the end, they did a pulse check to those that were watching and they asked that one lowest score, I receive regular updates on how well my child is learning. And from the participants that took placed in that pulse check survey, um, the average score was a four, an even four. So that's really exciting to see that. I mean, that's a 0.79 growth. It was a small group that took that survey, um, but that is exciting growth to see. And they also asked, if, was this a good use of 
their time and that got really high marks as well. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that and I believe the next um, learning session is social studies and that one is coming right up followed by language arts. So I'm just gonna continue and hopefully have continued success in that area. Um, our next one was we hosted a Canvas live session with Lexi Hill. Canvas is a great source and platform for our families to get updates on how their students are learning. And we had 386 views on that. So um, that was a pretty successful event. And we also did a pulse check polling on that. And we scored a 3.89 on that lowest question of I regularly receive updates. And we got a 4.67 on was this a good use of their time. So, um, you know, most of the people that were watching felt like they got a lot out of it. It was short, it was under half an hour. We chunked it, um, how to get good Canvas notifications, how to set the notification settings right, how to see what assignments your child has. So, you know, really measurable, easy stuff for families to participate in. I have a quick question, Maggie. So are these um, sessions then, so unfortunately I did not make the Canvas Live, but that sounds like a great session for me to come back and watch later. Are they available then on our YouTube channel or how would people go back and find that? Yeah, we have them archived on Facebook and then we have it archived on our website. We have a Canvas uh, section and then Leticia was kind enough to do a Spanish recording as well of the Canvas session. She even translated the slides. So we have that in English and Spanish available on our website for people to view later. We only had about 80 live viewers. So we picked up over 200 of those views after the fact. So um, you can definitely check it out later. It's a, it's a good short session. And then Estacada Middle Schools, I'll have to check in. I believe um, they did some publicity of it and sharing of it through SMORE, but it's also still available on their Facebook page as well. So I guess one call out would be I, I would appreciate if us having places on the website as well, because not everybody has Facebook. Yeah. So just as I didn't know you were, if you have it on both, but it'd be great to. Yeah, I think this is also another good area to lean into our YouTube channel as we continue to build that. So I'll be sure to check on what of those we can add to YouTube, YouTube and then just really make that clear on our website as well. We do have it on our website, but um, maybe under the news section would be an appropriate place to slot it because um, we've received some feedback lately that our website can be, um, it has a lot of great resources, but it can be overwhelming and digging through everything. So I think that's good feedback. Thank you. Excellent, thanks. Our next um, win was that EHS has made 477 calls to families, which is a great, really high number and just a huge shout out to the staff. Even as they transitioned students back into getting them on campus, they were still um, you know, putting their pedal on the gas with calling families and checking in. And then secretaries and staff have rounded with 148 families. Leticia is doing some of that rounding and she'll be sharing some of the themes that she's seen so far from her rounding. Um, our transportation secretary, Debbie, has done a massive amount of rounding and then our building secretaries are doing rounding as well. And one thing I noticed as I was looking through rounding and kind of identifying themes, a lot of the themes are just logistical questions about hybrid learning and transitioning back in. but. I've noticed because there's so many logistical questions, our secretaries were making checklists of um, questions that they didn't have the answers to yet and checking them off and noting when they followed up with that person and how that was received and if it needed additional follow up. And I just thought it was a really outstanding example of customer service and that these um, people that are rounding are making an effort to close the loop with families and you know, we've had almost 150 families that have just received really proactive, good customer service. And from what I've heard in, I round monthly with at least one building secretary. Um, and they've all said that people really appreciated the outreach and were surprised to just proactively get a phone call on how their experience was. So um, that's been a positive as well. Um, EMS also coming in really heavy with a lot of outreach has done 117 positive messages home to families. 
So um, that is just great and mind blowing. Um, one of the areas that they are targeting in addition to that one lowest scoring is the second lowest scoring item on our parent survey, which was that I received positive feedback um, from my child's school. So they're also working on addressing that second lowest scoring area. And then with their learning series, they're addressing the lowest area. So they, um, have been really adventurous and are really working to tackle that. So that's exciting. Our next win, um, Nutrition Services, they have a Facebook page that just gets really great engagement. And I steal their photos all the time. They're taking photos of kids as they're out delivering meals. We had a great photo of a kid in a Spider-Man costume getting a lunch. And um, they have 170 followers at this time. Um, so that's like, nine to 10% of our families are represented as following that nutrition services page. And I wanted to mention that because um, Julie opened this nutrition services page with Beaverton School District in mind. They do a great job with their nutrition services page and only 2% of their families are following their nutrition services page. So we are saturating the market pretty effectively. And I think we're about six months in, so we're still pretty new at this. And she's just doing a really great job with that. So um, that's a great win. And I think families are also asking a lot of questions on that page. Even if it's, you know, things we're com we've communicated, they still feel comfortable um, reaching out and saying, hey, I forgot when's my bus time again. And Julie and I have kind of been tag teaming, making sure people get a quick response on that. So it's been really positive. And I think people feel very um, open to asking questions to know that their question is gonna get an answer pretty quickly. And then my last win, and then I'll open up the floor because I'm sure um, you guys have some wins to share as well, but Student Services just rolled out a post IEP survey that I'm really excited about. So um, some of the feedback that they received is that communication can be kind of difficult for our students served by Student Services because there can be so many people supporting a student. You know, there's a teacher, there's a case manager, um, sometimes occupational therapists, you know, there's a lot of people that are in a child's corner. So just making sure that that child's communication is going well and that everyone's in the loop. So they put together a really intentional survey. It has eight questions. It asks, um, is your communication good? Do you feel like your student is getting um, the services that they need from their IEP? Are those services being delivered? Um, and 60% of survey takers gave it a five or a four on um, that they feel like they're receiving good communication. Um, they're still working to, of course, boost that number up higher, but also boost the number of survey takers. Um, they're having kind of, so the, I think they've sent it out 30 times so far, and they've had a little under 10 survey responses. Um, so they're really hoping to hardwire that in with their staff, that their staff are saying the why of why getting this feedback is so important and what we're really trying to accomplish and how we're trying to be allies for their students and that this is another really important piece of feedback. So um, they're working on that and I'm really excited that they got that launched and just excited to continue to collect more intentional data um, with that piece. So the ball is rolling on that and um, those are my wins. Uh, Trevor, if there's any you'd like, um, and then I know Leticia has some as well. Yes, thank you very much for sharing all those. Um, you know, in the times that we're living in right now, coming together as a family is, is vital and important. And our, both of our elementary schools, uh, we decided to do what is called One School, One Book, uh, where we are all reading the same book and we have special guests reading each night, which are teachers and stuff. Uh, and the idea here is to engage our families where they're gathered around each night um, being able to listen to the book or a part of the book being read to them. And uh, I saw some pictures. In fact, I was tagged in one. I don't know how I got in there, but uh, it was just neat to see families, uh, pictures of them sitting together on the couch with a chapter book uh, and a computer listening to somebody read the book to them. Uh, I know that we are averaging a little over 100 views per evening. Uh, and we, we apologized ahead of time to parents because it meant that there was a newsletter coming out every single night. 
Um, but over a hundred views and it's just been an, an incredible opportunity and uh, we're, we love it. We're just excited about it. So a great win there. Yeah, thank you. That's one of my favorites and seeing everyone come together to share a similar experience, I think, um, is a really great uh, unification for schools, especially during a time when we're all kind of spread out. So I really appreciate that one. Um, Leticia, I know you had um, a couple of rounding themes and things that you've seen, um, if you want to share those. Yeah, so I recently started rounding with a few families. I've probably contacted about 20 or so families within the last two months. Um, and it seems that families are becoming more aware that there's someone here available to help help them get through this or any information that they may need um, and appreciative that the district is making these changes. So I'm happy to be of service and just excited to see what's to come. Awesome. And you also had some um, numbers of home visits that you've been doing as well. If you want to talk a little bit about um, home visits and what you've learned um, and what feedback you've gotten from staff as well, because I know you've gotten some feedback. So I've done over seven home visits in the last two months, and half of those were over attendance issues and to check in and share information. I've sat with parents, um, just helping them translate s'mores, um, how to access Parent Square, and then just how to get that information that they may not know how to access from their home. Um, so it's definitely been a helpful experience for us all. Um, Students seem to be accessing Canvas more after I do those home visits or contacting their teachers. Um, and I know that staff have mentioned that those check-ins just need to be more consistent and on a regular basis um, because after a few months or once the semester ends, then they go back to those attendance issues. So it's helpful to check in with families and connect with them um, and just reach out and offer those services to our Spanish speaking community. Great, thank you, Leticia. Um, and it's good to hear that, you know, staff are also noticing a difference and improved engagement on Canvas and in attendance after those home visits and that, those outreach. So I think that's um, really good feedback. And, you know, we look forward to continuing to build this program and doing more rounding and just improvements with our Spanish speaking families. Um, the next piece I kind of wanted to go over here was um, I could, uh, just add for a couple seconds. If you could go back, uh, Maggie, uh, a couple of things I'd like to celebrate is just the growth in conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, for Trevor to be able to say that, you know, 100 families are accessing this book um, is a new conversation to us where we're using data to tell us if things are making an impact or not. I really like the student services last bullet point that says 60% of survey takers agree that they're receiving good communication. 60% um, is not a number that I'm necessarily satisfied with, but the fact that we're starting to ask the question of what parent experience is inside these IEP surveys allows us to improve that process. And so um, I'm just glad that we're asking these questions and just asking those questions alone, I believe is also a win at this point for us. Thank you for bringing that up. I um, have a quote on my wall that says the only feedback that is dangerous for your organization is the feedback that you don't hear. And I think the fact that we are um, learning where some of our gaps are, are is the only way that we can address these things. And our families, our students served by student services, our um, emerging bilingual families, all of our families deserve that five communication. So um, measuring it and getting their input is the only way that we're going to get there. I remember last time, sorry, my kids just got here from soccer. Um, <laughs> uh, they're barking. Uh, last time we talked about in the rounding with families, maybe getting more information around what does good communication look like? Is that something that you're going to share later or have you started asking those questions? Thank you for bringing that up. So I asked our secretaries um, to begin asking um what does a five look like in communication and what would frequent communication look like to you? Um, we don't have data to report on that yet, just because that was a pretty recent adjust, but that is something that I'm looking at in the rounding logs um, and hope to see soon. Um, I'm anticipating that we'll get a different answer from every family, but I really kind of want to find a median of 
what is the average answer on what regular communication looks like and what a five looks like. And I'm sure there will be some themes that pop up. So um, I'm really happy that we were able to make that adjustment and I'm looking forward to um, seeing what comes out of that rounding. Um, our next thing that I've been tracking is our super 60 second views. And I think this is another great example of adjusting because you can kind of see in here, we have some spikes and then we have a little bit of a lull again. Um, and our super 60 second videos are one of our main vehicles of district communication. So it's important that we are aware of what the data is looking like so that we can adjust and strategize to make this more effective and really reach out um, to as many families as possible. So we've tried some new tactics, some thumbnails, some um, attention catchers, and we'll just continue to work on making changes to hopefully see the needle move. And um, 111, that day where you see the spike, that was a video where we announced our um, back to school timeline. So um, that was a high video watch. Um, so it's good to even see the data reflects um, what kind of topics that families are really interested in hearing about. Um, so just the fact that we're tracking this data is really helpful because I think I would like to see um, this number continue to go up or at least um, not have so many dips. So that's another thing that we're working on. Um, some of our barriers is um, working on proactive parent outreach versus passive parent resources. And what I mean by this is I think uh, there's been really a mindset shift that I've been happy to see, that, but that we still always have to be mindful of, of really reaching out to families and like Leticia, you know, making home visits and our secretaries proactively calling families instead of just saying, well, here's these resources, like you can find things on Canvas or on our website. Um, really getting out there and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with families. And so working through that mindset and that if, um, if something isn't working for our families, we have to be proactive about going out there and figuring out what will work for them and changing some of our systems to better reach families. So that's one thing that we've been working through. Um, another thing I mentioned a little bit earlier, but our pulse check participation, including our student services survey participation, we're sending these surveys out now, but um, we're still getting kind of, I would say, a low response rate on our pulse check participation. Usually, if we're having something like a Facebook Live that we offer a pulse check, we average like 10 to 15% of those people that are watching live are taking the pulse check survey. So I really just, you know, want to continue to build our community's understanding of the why of why we're doing these pulse checks and then continuing to close the loop on, we get this feedback from you, here's what we're doing with it. So they don't just think we're hammering them with a million surveys that this is um, data that continues to move the needle and is really meaningful feedback from them. Um, I've also been talking in rounding about ways that um, buildings and services and the district can double up on some of those pulse checks so that, um, you know, if I'm sending out a pulse check on communication, I'm going to check in with the buildings to see, are, are they doing the same thing? Did they have a Facebook Live where they asked this yesterday? Because I don't want to bug EMS if they just collected that same data yesterday. So. I think it's a systems improvement that we're starting to see that we're sharing data more transparently so that we can just really be effective with the amount of uh, surveys we're asking from our families. So I think that's something that we'll continue to develop. So Maggie, do you feel that you guys have kind of a central, like a, because of the, I'm trying to think of the word, kind of like a, a district level of survey questions that then become building specific, you know what I mean, where it all kind of rolls up and down. Do you feel that we have that in place or are we still, that's where you're talking about building that systems check? I would say our um, data dashboard for um, our pillars is probably the most central location. You know, I can see, oh, um, Ben committed to this learning series. He has this coming up and then he'll adjust his for example, the district um, 
survey for parent communication was a 3.78, but Ben's might be a 3.56 and there might be, their weakness might be different than the districts overall. So they're gonna adjust that to um, meet their building specific issues. Um, I hope that makes sense, but buildings are, you know, asking the overall district questions to move the needle for the district, but also getting specific for some of the issues that impact their building more than some of the other buildings. So I think um, with the pillar dashboard and with rounding, we're starting to be able to look and see other people's data and compare it and use that to make the system more aware of what other buildings are doing. So. I think we're getting better at the left hand knowing what the right hand yeah. is doing, but I always think, you know, we could improve on that a little bit more. Cool. Thanks. Um, the next thing that I've heard just pop up in rounding so much lately is um, the level of communication to families and overwhelming families with communication. And this is where I think um, getting some of that data in rounding from secretaries can really be valuable but also, you know, there's just a lot going on right now and information fatigue is a very real thing. So I've talked, you know, with some of the buildings, I was um, rounding with a building yesterday and we were going over strategies for how we can make communication just really effective and brief and increase, you know, parents understanding of things very quickly. So what some of our buildings are doing now are they're adding a need to know section at the top of their s'more that just has the five dates you need to know and the five things you need to know this week. Um, and then if you read below that on the s'more newsletter, that's great. Um, but at least we got those quick hitters out to families. So we're looking at some strategies of ways that we can really just make communication easy and digestible. And then for those families that really want to learn more, they can continue scrolling. So I think there's a couple of strategies that we can use to help overcome that. But it's just something to be mindful of, especially during an extremely crazy year. And I look forward to, we have our 45 day huddle um, tomorrow. And I'm hoping that we can see some strategies that have worked for some buildings and that we can adjust some of our strategies to help avoid that overwhelm. I like that idea though. I mean, I think just thinking back to when I was a parent with multiple kids across multiple buildings, because I was getting different formats and different timing and different, you know, I, I think that's great to, you know, kind of try to find some consistency and alignment of key communications and, you know, most important information, but I know it's hard. <laughs> I think it's so true. Also being mindful of, um, having students at different buildings. And I think our district, one thing I've seen grow, even over the past few years, I think it's been slow, but I've seen a lot of growth during my time here, is the systems that we're all getting on. You know, the buildings all use S'more now. The buildings are getting more consistent with Parent Square. So using the same tools to communicate. Um, Canvas, switching over to Canvas for the, all the schools. I think we are starting to have a little less um, apps for families. Maybe it's only one folder of apps that you need for your child now instead of two or three. So I think we'll just continue to work on systematizing that across the entire district. Um, the next thing I wanted to bring up and then last thing in barriers is continuing to understand and expand parent square proficiency. That's something that our buildings and our departments have all really leaned into. One win that I forgot to mention is um, the transportation department has sent over 400 messages in Parent Square um, during their device and food delivery. They also did a really cool AB system where they would send it via Parent Square to some families and do phone calls to other families to see what families preferred and to see what yielded better results. Um, I'll have to circle back with them on what they're finding so far, but they did say that the parent square was much less labor intensive. Um, so just continuing to expand parent square proficiency. It's still a new system and we rolled it out at the beginning of a very hectic year. So I think we still have a lot of loops to close there, but I think as we continue to get better and more comfortable with that, that that's gonna be, um, just continue to be a good tool for families. 
And then um, my last slide, and then um, if anyone has any other questions or feedback, um, our improvement in action, um, 11 out of our 14 communication action plans are completed or in progress. And two more are close to moving yellow. One I would say, I would say is like an orangish yellow. So I'm feeling good about um, getting some people unstuck and removing some barriers and I think um, everyone's starting to be in a good place. Data is starting to be collected as you could, I hope you could see um, phone calls are being made, connections are happening, rounding themes are starting to emerge and those um, live events are occurring. So it's exciting. I feel like the flywheel is definitely in motion for this pillar. And um, rounding themes are kind of helping aiding the process of that adopt, adapt, abandon. And I'm sure we'll see more of this in our 45 day huddle, but I think something like communications is something that each building can learn from each other so easily. So um, it's really nice to hear something from a building like, oh, parents are feeling overwhelmed. Let's strategize on that. And then next time I round with another building, I can say, are you experiencing this? Because here's you know, a strategy that one building's working on. This might work for your building as well. So I think that rounding with families and rounding with buildings, um, we're starting to have an idea of how we can adapt to make things more powerful and make our outreach to families um, more effective. Um, more pulse checks are also coming up, you know, as we transition more middle and high school students back into the building. Um, finding more survey opportunities to ask families, how did the transition go? Um, I know the operations department has worked with buildings to do surveys and I haven't gotten to surveys yet from the secondary level, but I do know that they just recently conducted surveys on the level of safety and level of cleanliness in buildings. And so those pulse checks are ongoing and just getting the temperature on how families are feeling about hybrid learning. So um, there's some great opportunities coming up. And then lastly, I know this is early, but I always like to think about things like this early because I think it's so important. Um, it's, I'm already starting to think about planning a really robust rollout of our spring parent feedback survey. Last year, I believe we increased responses by two or 300 families, and I would like to keep that trend going. I think um, having as many families as possible represented in a survey that shapes so many of the actions that we commit to is really critical. Um, last year, we only got about a dozen Spanish speaking responses. And now that we have Leticia in her role, I would really um, like to work with her on a, just a really robust outreach to our Spanish speaking families so that they can have their voices heard in this as well. Because I'm sure some of the feedback that we'll receive from our emerging bilingual families um, could be different. And I really want that to be represented and heard throughout this process. So um, that is something that's coming on my radar as we shift to spring. One other win, Maggie, is I think in 30 days, you've gone from 167 action plans to 14 action plans. <laughs> I like this a lot better. This feels yeah. right. Yeah. This feels the right level of uh, tracking and, and yeah. work for this pillar. 167 um, does sound impressive, but um, this is definitely <laughs> accurate, yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering about the parent feedback surveys and the pulse surveys and things like that. Have, have you considered any incentives like um, raffle off some swag or gear or, you know, some fun things like that um, to get more participation? That's a great idea. I have thought about that. Um, I've looked at, I've, just started digging into this, but I've kind of looked into uh, the model that a lot of community colleges do, where they have um, every 50th survey taker gets um, a coffee card or something mm -hmm. like that. So I have been looking into some of those incentives and how we can um, make it equitable and not too expensive, but um, yeah. still incentivize some really good responses on that. The one challenge is that we don't require sign-ins Mm. Um, just because we want as many people to take it as possible. And so I don't want to encourage any um, duplicate survey taking. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking into how we can balance that. And I'm sure um, Studer will have some good ideas on that as well. But that's, that's a good one to look into. I totally agree. 
When you get closer to the parent feedback survey, is this um, committee an opportunity to take a look at those um, questions and stuff, or is this the forum Absolutely. for that? Okay. Yeah, I good. would love next month to kind of go over that and see um, what data we're collecting from families. And um, I, I know a lot of it is normed across other districts, so we do want to keep some of that. But I think um, Estacada is unique, and this is this is the place to see if we need to make some adjustments. That would be great. That would be really interesting. Okay, I will put it on the agenda for next month. So we will be in April at that point, and that is right around the time that we start working on our spring launch. Well, that concludes my report. If there's any other questions or anything else anyone would like to share. Maggie, something I was just thinking about too, uh, when you were putting up the Super 60 uh, data, uh, something that just kind of struck me is in light of, you know, this times that we're living in, I think of like city council, how they do all of their meetings on Zoom. I think that we have a awesome opportunity here when we are recording these meetings uh, or we're doing them live and then reposting them where families may not be able to jump on at that meeting right away, but having the recording later on so that they can go back and view it, I think is, um, it's just in a tremendous opportunity for our families. And, you know, next week we have, believe it or not, again, talking about spring, we have our kinder connection um, and we are going to Facebook live that. Uh, and we're ex super excited to have Leticia join us um, to help with kind of translation and stuff. And Part of that is that we're going to share just like you have slideshow so that, you know, it's recorded, it'll be posted later on. And so any family can go back and look at that, or they can tag other families that might have a kindergartner coming in. And so I think it's just a great opportunity that we continue to record those meetings and get those posted. So uh, thank you for doing that as much as you always do. Yeah, I um, totally agree with everything you said. I think it's a great opportunity. And I think it's one that we can continue to capitalize on even more than we're currently doing as we just continue to expand the amount of video content we are producing. One great example is the athletics meeting that we had, um, oh gosh, last week, I believe. Um, we had, um, we doubled the amount of views after the initial live session. And I had some people that said, oh, we were just getting home from work or we were cooking or I couldn't make it. And we were just able to send them the link really quickly. And all of the questions were in that. So um, I think that was, you know, a really good opportunity for our families to continue to engage with that. So totally agree with everything you said. Probably more attended that than whenever Superintendent Carpenter and I ran that show. So <laughs> great job. I have said athletics is definitely a big draw. So um, another huge win that we are, um, we were able to see some people in the stadium last night and they were really safe. And it was great to see some community members out in our facilities again. It was really special. It was, I was there. <laughs> I didn't see you up in the stands, but um, I got some good photos. And, it, you know, when we talk about engaging our families and community, it would be, we think about family breakfasts and these sporting mm -hmm. events and um, the musical. And I think the district has done such a good job of pivoting and offering so many great online opportunities. But um, there's really nothing like being able to shake someone's hand and see them face to face. Yes, that's pretty exciting. Very exciting. I guess I missed the public comment questions. I'm assuming we don't have any. <laughs> not, for this, not for this meeting. Not for this meeting, okay. <laughs> but I would like to thank the people that have stuck it through and viewed the entire time. I appreciate um, all our live viewers and look forward to continuing to live stream. Yeah. Sure. Woohoo. <laughs> all school board members, no, just kidding. <laughs> oh, Perfect. So I guess then our next meeting. So I should check my calendar this time because I did have a conflict and I forgot. Um, yeah, things are starting to get busy. Um, it looks like our next one, we are not continuing the first streak. It would be April 5th if we continued on Monday at six o'clock. I think that's good for the timing of the big surveys that we're gonna be getting ready for to have a good opportunity to take a look at that. 
And Maggie, before we adjourn, will you just re-summarize for me what our next 30 days look like that we're going to be working on to report 30 days from now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, three of the big things we're working on, um, more rounding themes from our secretaries and from Leticia and um, all of our departments. After the 45 day cycle, we should have some um, adjustments that will come out of that. So um, just reporting those adjustments and how those are going. Um, getting those final action plans off the ground and then coming back with um, our spring survey that we're launching so that we can take a good look at that um, in the public and see if it meets estimated standards and is ready to go out to the community and talk a little bit more about how we can just really drum up some fantastic community participation in that. Great, thank you. All right. Excellent. So next meeting, Monday, April 5th at 6 p.m. And awesome. I don't, I don't have anything else. I mean, this was really informative. Thank you. Great job. Meeting uh, officially adjourned. All right. Thank you. Everybody.